Good morning, and the Lord be with you, and I wish you a blessed and a happy day of Pentecost. It's the start of a new season, the end of the Easter season, start of the new season of Pentecost, the day when we uh, usually celebrate the birthday of the church, the coming of the Holy Spirit, uh, to fill the whole church uh, and lead us and guide us uh, in life. So we... Um, our new color today is red, of course, as a sign of the coming of the Holy Spirit. And uh, this Sunday, we want to uh, remember in our prayers, continue to remember Jean Danielson. We also want to remember Donna Fortune, who has now gone into Northland Nursing Home uh, there on hospice care. So we will lift Donna Fortune up in our prayers as well. I think we also all have been thinking about, uh, especially if you're like me, you, we, we all have a lot of family connections to people in Twin Cities. Uh, I have two kids myself who live and work there. And uh, it was an especially sad and kind of disturbing week there that has now rippled out all over the country. Well, and I'll certainly lift up um, all of our concerns connected to that situation in our prayers as well. And then also um, t t tomorrow, June 1st, has been, I think, designated as a national day of grieving and prayer for especially all those people that have um, died of the coronavirus in this past um, several months. Uh, but I, I think we also need to lift up really everybody uh, who has lost loved ones in these past, especially three months. Uh, for instance, uh, here the family of Sue Bjerke, who uh, had their private family burial service on Friday, but everybody has been missing out on uh, the opportunity to gather together at funerals um, and share both our sorrow and our hope in Christ together, which has really been a difficult loss, I think, for a lot of people. We put, postpone those events and, and save them for later, hopefully have them later, um, but it, it makes it a difficult time for everybody. So I think we should um, also include that as part of our prayers for the day. So let us continue now with our gathering song. You are my joy, you are my song, you are the well, the one I'm drawing from, you are my refuge, my whole life long, where else would I go? Surely my God is the strength of my soul, your love defends me. Your love defends me, and when I feel like I'm all alone, your love defends me, your love defends me. Day after day, night after night, I will remember you're with me in this fight Although the battle It rages on The war is already won I know the war is already won Surely my God Is the strength of my soul Your love defends me Your love defends me God 
transition to a new season of the church year one more time we could share the words alleluia christ is risen christ is risen indeed alleluia and the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the communion of the holy spirit be with you all and let us pray oh god on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of the Spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our first reading for today is comes from, traditionally, the second chapter of the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came the sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. People of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist, the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us 
the fire of your love. Alleluia. And the good news for today is written in St. John in the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, this is Pentecost Sunday, and Pentecost, at least part of it, is about language. You're talking my language, we say, when somebody says something to us that we can understand easily. As a preacher, I'm always trying to figure out how to say something to you about the Bible, about the Holy Spirit, about the church, about Jesus, in a way that we can all understand. The very first thing I really learned as a preacher is that a sermon is a talk. I'm talking to y'all. It's not an essay or a piece of formal writing. I found out pretty fast that's a good way to lose people and see lots of glazed eyes out there in the congregation. So it's a talk. I'm just talking with you. Still kind of bugs me if a person uses a lot of big words that make me have to stop and look them up in the dictionary. You know, it's not so bad if you're reading, because the object is to learn something after all. But in a talk, not going to work. I learned a lot about good writing and storytelling when I worked on the newspaper back in the day in Lafarge. And uh, my boss... Bonnie Muller, his dad, uh, wrote a very funny and wise column for the paper. He called it the John Bear Spreader Notes. It had a picture of a manure spreader on there. Now, I'm not trying to spread manure on you all today, but Dale Muller wrote like he was talking to you across the kitchen table. And I decided I was always going to try and do the same. See, the Holy Spirit came and gave people the power to communicate with people in the language they could understand. You're talking my language. A few years ago, I got to go, uh, a privilege as a country preacher, I got the privilege to go to Ethiopia and be one of the teaching pastors there. As this congregation, I know, shared in that ministry also. One of yours went also. And when I went there, uh, most of the time I spent in Ethiopia, I would go and preach somewhere on each, each Sunday that I was there. And I would, as, when you did that, I had to say a sentence or a phrase, and then I would stop, and my translator would put it into oral mifa for the congregation, because very few could understand English or e even my accent made it difficult for those who did understand English to understand me. You know, and I always thought, accent? What accent? I don't have an accent. But yeah, we all do. And <clears throat> just like people now who have pastors or uh, visiting missionaries that come from Africa or India, we have a difficult time sometimes to pick up their accent. They might have a masterful uh, command of the English language. Their accent can be really difficult for us. One time we went to a huge church with 2,000 people there in the congregation to preach, but I didn't get to preach because there was a mix-up in the scheduling. And so I sat through a two-hour service in which everything was in Amharic and then translated into Oromitha. And I didn't have a translator for either one, so I didn't understand any of it. Except once in a while when they'd say the word gufta, 
I remembered, oh, that means Lord. But it's not my language. You know, I was lost. One time I took a different translator with me, and my driver, Namomsa, said afterwards, he left out a lot of your words. <laughs> I guess that was the Reader's Digest condensed version of my sermon. Have you ever been way down south, like Alabama or Mississippi, and you heard people talking? You knew it was in English, but you couldn't catch a single word? Wow, it's crazy, isn't it? How can it be so different? Isn't it the same language and everything? Even the same language can be way different. Isn't that interesting? You're talking my language. That's what God is up to at Pentecost, especially. But in Jesus, he came among us as a human being. He came to show us and bring us and give us the rule of God in a way that we could all understand. So the first thing of all is that he came among us as one of us. There's really no other way we could understand so the Holy Spirit is helping us to understand this human being, Jesus, in a way that helps us to be the kind of human beings that God made us to be. This particular human being and his words and deeds help us to understand what God is up to and what God is about. God translated himself into this Jewish man in order to communicate himself with us human beings. He came talking our language. When Jesus said to the disciples, receive the Holy Spirit, and he breathed on them or blew the Holy Spirit into them, he was giving them a gift. The gift of the Spirit is the presence of God. Now, it comes in a number of different ways in 1 Corinthians 12. Paul says it can come in a form of a particular kind of gift given for a particular kind of job. There are whole varieties of gifts. It's about prophecy, discernment, different things like that. So it could be a particular gift. It's also just the gift of the grace of God, his love and forgiveness poured into all of our hearts. That's the primary gift of the Spirit. And it also can be the gift of being able to share the good news of the grace of God with someone else in their language. And so it spread around the world. God talking our language, wherever it is. <clears throat> in North Africa, the Ethiopians traced the start of their church to Mark. The writer of the first gospel, which is considered to be older than Matthew. <clears throat> Tradition of the church says he went to North Africa and started the church there. And this is still the old, ancient, Coptic, Orthodox church of Egypt and Ethiopia. They're, they're connected to each other that still exists today. And a few years ago, you might remember when, when the ISIS people were killing Christians those were the Coptic Orthodox folks uh, in Egypt. However, the Orthodox Church there in Nekemti, Ethiopia, where I was, they would periodically broadcast prayers over a loudspeaker that could be heard all over town. But they did it, interestingly, in an ancient language called Ge'ez, which no one even speaks or hardly understands anymore. So it was really, as one pastor friend of mine called it, noise pollution. Because they weren't talking anybody's language. That's partly why our Lutheran church brothers and sisters in Ethiopia have grown so much and so fast. Because they do talk the language of their people. And that's not Amharic, by the way, which is the bossy ruling tribe, uh, but Oromitha, the language of the Oromo people, which is the, a thriving fifth largest tribe in Africa. 
The Lutheran Church there got started by Americans and Norwegians and Swedes back in 1957. It's only 63 years old, but today it's the largest Lutheran church in the world because they gave to the people the grace of Christ in their own language. The Holy Spirit also then creates a church which shares that spirit and speaks in a couple of ways. In Matthew, Jesus says to bind and loose. He gives the church the authority to bind and loose. Here in John, he says, forgive and retain. There's a song we sometimes sing on uh, Pentecost Sunday. It's a favorite of mine called Spirit of Gentleness. But it's, there are two things in that song. The two things that the Holy Spirit does. There's a spirit of gentleness and also a spirit of restlessness. Because there are times and things to let go of, to relax, to loosen, to untie, forgive. There are other times and things that we hang on tightly to. We restrain, we are strict, we build a retaining wall to hold something back. We seek justice. The old time preachers used to say a pastor has two jobs, comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. See, that's forgiving and retaining. We speak the words of forgiveness, <clears throat> which spread this spirit into the world. I've told you, shared a couple of stories with you the last few weeks about <clears throat> For one, the, those families in Charleston, South Carolina, who forgave Dylan Roof for his murder of their loved ones, even though he was not sorry. It doesn't seem to have affected him, but it is a witness to many people of the gift of God. And there may be many others who are inspired by it, filled by the Spirit. I also shared with you about the people of Rwanda who went through a horrific time there uh, with the Hutu people, killed 300,000 Tutsi people in three months' time. And after that was stopped, which was very important, needed to stop, what has happened since then? Since then, of course, following punishment of those perpetrators, there was also some healing that took place because some of those perpetrators later came back to their victims and actually went to work for them, trying to atone for what had happened and receiving forgiveness and new life, a fresh start from their victims. Amazing story. Forgiveness can be clear and amazing in any language. And to a suffering world, forgiveness is talking our language. It is restoring. It is rebuilding. But retaining is important too. Retaining just means we don't do that here. You know, it's what led the first Christians to take in little Roman babies that were left by the side of the road to die because we can't do that. We can't just let that be. It's what led people to finally say, no more slavery. This needs to stop. We don't do that here. God made all of us to be free. And so this impulse continues retaining for our church. And when the church forgets what it's supposed to be, or, or things get, when we get into fights or, or get lost by the wayside, kind of, in what's going on, retaining also means remembering. Remembering what we're supposed to be about. And so 
then we confess our sins and begin again. And the Holy Spirit starts us over again. So again today, on this Pentecost Sunday, let us receive again the Holy Spirit, God's gift to you, his love poured into our hearts. And let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for all the ways you have breathed life into your church and used ordinary people to pass its witness fresh to each generation, and raised it from sin and death again and again. Lord, fill us up with your Holy Spirit. Stir it up in us so that we can be gentle with all who need your forgiving touch and restless with the ways that need to change. Blow new life and love into our church and refresh and renew our language and the way we talk with others. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Giver of every breath I breathe, author of all eternity, giver of every perfect thing, to you be the glory. Maker of heaven and of earth, and to come comprehend your word, King over all the Author of all eternity, giver of every perfect thing, to you be the glory. Maker of heaven and of earth, no one can comprehend your word. King over all the universe, to you be the glory. And I am alive because I'm alive. Because the blood of Jesus Christ that covers me and reigns in death man's life. It's all because of Jesus. Every sunrise sings your praise. The universe cries out your praise. I'm singing freedom all my days. Now that I Because the blood of Jesus Christ that covers me and raises dead men's life. It's all because of Jesus. It's all because of Jesus I'm alive. It's all because the blood of Jesus Christ. Covers me and raises dead men's life. It's all because of Jesus. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. And now uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection. We join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Oh God, we call on your spirit of unity. 
giving thanks for our different vocations. Activate and utilize the diverse gifts present in your church, that they reveal your love for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Lord, we call on your spirit of life, present in air, wind, humidity, storms, and oxygen in our atmosphere, breathing energy into all things. Heal with your breath the whole creation, especially those who struggle to breathe due to air pollution. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Lord, we call on your spirit of righteousness. Wherever we as a people are divided, unite us. Wherever we are prideful, humble us. Give each one of us a heart for justice and empathy. Especially we lift up to you the people of Minneapolis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we call on your spirit of healing. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. We pray for all those who long for comfort, especially this day we lift up to you, Jean Danielson, Donna Fortune, and the family and friends of Sue Bierke. And for all families who have lost loved ones in the last three months. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, we call on your spirit of friendship. As Elizabeth welcomed Mary to her home, give us a spirit of welcome appropriate to this time of a pandemic. To all those whom we meet in this congregation and outside this congregation, surprise us daily with unexpected grace in the midst of all the precautions that we take, that we may rejoice in every blessing you send. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, we call on your spirit of hope as you have led your saints in all times and places. Stir in us the desire to follow their example, leading us from death to new life in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Again, as we would be gathering in church, we would gather our offerings uh, at this time. Uh, We'll just take that time now to say thank you again for sharing your gifts with the church by mail or online. Appreciate all that you do to help that the mission and ministry of the church continues through this time of not meeting together. Let us pray. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance just as you do with our lives. Feed us again at this table for service in your name, in the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. And we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power, and the glory, and the kingdom forever and ever. Amen. And now may the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. You
called me from the grave by name. You called me out of all my shame. I see the old has passed away. The new Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. <laughs>